So when I was a kid, uh, I, I, t I took piano classes and my teacher would always push me to use a metronome. And I always hated that because the click sound is very annoying. Soundbrenner is trying to fill a niche in the music industry with its app-connected vibrating metronome. In Europe, we had maybe found like two or three engines that we would order from several places around the world. And then as soon as we arrived here in, in, in Asia, we went to just one store and they literally had 65 different motors. Florian Zimmendinger and his team left Europe to develop their product with the help of a new Hong Kong startup accelerator that specializes in the Internet of Things. Hong Kong is a fantastic location in terms of the, the rule of law, the financial and banking system. Um, the difference in the IoT industry versus the internet industry is that IoT products actually have to be physically manufactured. And Hong Kong has a fantastic foundation and heritage in consumer electronics and product development. Just over the border in mainland China is the heart of the world's manufacturing industry. Hong Kong itself is one of the best places to do business in the world. Combined, that makes this a uniquely attractive place for startups focused on consumer electronics. But with some of the world's most expensive real estate prices, don't expect chill out zones and ping pong tables. Co working spaces here in Hong Kong are an elbow to elbow endeavour. Singapore startups, meanwhile, are treated to relative luxury. BASH is a government funded project with 22,000 square feet of working space a bar, a lab complete with 3D printers, as well as motivational slogans and table football. This bash facility is really important to Singapore because it gives us a place to have startups get together, investors get together, so it gives us ideas and ways to communicate with people that have something really special to do. Facilities like these here at Bash are at the heart of Singapore's efforts to foster a startup culture. The question is whether this will be the birthplace of a string of Alibabas. Or will this nanny state solution end up stifling the very creativity it's trying to nurture? We would say that startups and government are very much hand in glove. And we take a look at a very uh, well known example the role that the US government played in the earliest stages of Silicon Valley. So, what we're trying to do as government in Singapore is frame the questions. So, we don't see this in, in any way as contradictory or conflicting. Eddie Chow's latest project, Spinny, is an app that provides a platform for people with information to sell. He plans to launch in India in the coming months. As well as the ease of doing business, Singapore's attraction for him lies in its geographic position in Asia. Well, Singapore itself is, we call it a tiny little red dot. Mm -hmm. Our own market actually is very small. Um, uh, in fact, I would be very surprised that from the investor point of view or even from the entrepreneur point of view that if any of my company or any of my investing company focus just in Singapore. But what Singapore really has going for it is the money. And the great thing, of course, within Singapore is if you work with some of the government programs, you can offload risk. So you can write a check and the government writes a check and if things go well for some of the schemes, then you buy the government's check. If they don't, then you don't. Does that kill entrepreneurship, having the uh, government underwrite the risk? No, no, because this allows the VCs to take bets that they weren't going to take. Um, right. And, you know, these are good, these are, there's lots of great VCs here. These guys, maybe they weren't going to write 10 checks, maybe they'll write one, and now they'll write 10. Back in Hong Kong, engineer Paul Lee teamed up with an ear, nose and throat doctor to develop an audio device that tailors sound to the individual hearing needs of the listener. Once we find out your actual hearing and we provide the missing parts for you, you can actually lower your volume uh, while hearing better music. But for startups in Hong Kong, the problem is the lack of venture capitalists. I mean, Hong Kong has a lot of cash uh, and it's very conservative. And, and that's a good reason. I mean, if I have $2 million, I can always invest in you, who I don't know, or, and your business model is foreign to me, or I can just buy a flat. So right now, I would say that the investor money, probably, if you were a startup, you still look towards the West. I think that early to mid stage is what's missing here in Hong Kong. Um, most of the investors today in Hong Kong have not dive deep into technology yet. They're, 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 they're grasping at it from the outside and trying to understand the, the true potential of these companies. 
The startup culture of Silicon Valley is undeniably the envy of the world. From London to Beijing, everyone wants to copy its unique blend of risk capital and technical innovation. Hong Kong is attractive to inventors because of its proximity to China's manufacturing, but it lacks experienced venture capitalists. Singapore has oodles of cash and government backing, but lacks a practical foundation of skills and ideas. Both cities have a long way to go, but success in tech is vital if they're to maintain their position as leading world cities. Ben Bland, Financial Times, Hong Kong.